I have to ask you, she, she tested positive for two banned substances, substances. Mm -hmm. Um, can you shed any light on the situation? Um, because it kind of went dark, she's denying it and we haven't heard anything about the process. Um, can you shed any light on that situation? And were you surprised when that happened? I'll I like you guys because y'all talk about some shit that I probably would they would they couldn't pay me to even talk about, but I'm gonna talk about it with you guys on ProBot. Welcome to Spotlight Interview. I'm George Jackvick alongside the champ Chris Algeri. We got another champion in the house. What's up? Man Tony Harrison. How are you, Tony? My brothers, how y'all feeling? Hey, it's All always good. a good day for me when I'm talking to champions. It's always a good day. Uh, Chris, Tony and I go back a few years. Uh, I was in his camp when he was uh, facing off with Charlo the second time. And um, I can tell you a couple things about Tony. At the time, he didn't like Mr. Charlo very much. And Tony can bowl and play chess. So this guy is a multi-talented. He's a trainer now, too. So um, Come on, y'all. He's a multi-talented. I, I change breaks, too, if you pay me enough. <laughs> <laughs> so so tony um we only have 24 minutes so we want to get right into it um let's get it i want to ask you about jamel charlo he's been getting ripped for his people are saying he didn't show up that he showed up for a paycheck um i know you watched the fight what did you think of charlo's performance the other night well got a bunch of different analysis from my end of it right so i think I was kind of, oh, I was okay, right? I was okay with how he fought. I, thought, I actually thought he was trying to think a little bit, which you never really kind of see him use his brain. So he was trying to think a little bit, right? So I'm like, cool. But the part that I didn't like about him trying to think at that moment or in this fight in particular is um, my, my father always told me, well, with great power comes great responsibility. For that man to talk so much shit when everybody else fighting, for that man to get up there and parade and say he doing this for the culture, for this man to 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 percept, to to send a persona like I'm going to, to knock Canelo and they've been chasing Canelo for so long. So the so the narrative of the the narrative of the of the, of the story was so it was it was like we like we was like waiting on it, waiting on it, and for all the talk. For all the chasing, for all those things to have happened, he is just nothing. There's nothing else to say about it. They ripping him up because he out. And my, like I said, you can see it. Like you can see it. Like the first, like even in the interview, like you could tell where his mind was at. Like it's even in the, in the, 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 the post of the, the, the post fight interview, he like, well, at least I didn't get knocked out. So that yep. it showed us like satisfaction. It was just satisfaction getting to the end. Daring to be great, right? Which you did. I don't think he went into the fight. But I think round one, I think Canelo started fast and, and vis more viciously than than before. So I think like Canelo meant business from round one. And then from round one, Charles said, like, oh shit, I can't really do nothing with this boy. Let me just go ahead and just win this. Let me let me let, 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 let me let me do my 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 my, my satisfactory satisfaction victory and just get to the end i think bad <laughs> yeah yeah i ain't the type of guy to tweet about it because that's not my thing mm -hmm. but yeah now i'm now i'm gonna interview with chris yeah bad and then if somebody asked me bad now tony now now okay we understand how you feel about the performance what what were your feelings going into the fight obviously you have you've been in the ring with the man you have a very high boxing iq um, in terms of what Charlo brought to the table against Canelo, what were your thoughts going into the fight for his chances and what he could do to be successful against Canelo? I thought he had slim to none chance to win. Mm. Slim, mm. slim to none. Like I said, was it wasn't my thing to go out there and parade about it or go and tweet about it and make a big thing like old oh, Tony going against you? Because I'm pretty sure everybody thought that I was. But like for the culture, like I wasn't going against him. Like I, I didn't go against him. I wasn't like. I wasn't even. Go I, I was actually going for the culture. Like I wanted the culture to win. Like I wanted mm -hmm. us to win. So I didn't want Charlo to lose. Like I wanted him to win. You know what I mean? Like so. But I wasn't rooting for him. I wasn't like at the screen, like screaming, but like, "Let's go, Charlo! Come on!" No, no, no. But I didn't want you to lose, my brother. I wanted you to win, right? So, but 
Yeah, I thought he had slim to none chance. Like, like when 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 everybody talks about boxing, like when everybody talks about punching power, I think Canelo's face everything possible that you could put. Like you you could be in the lab putting Jamil Charlo together for this fight. Like, and 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 everything you could put together to to make the perfect fight to, to beat this guy, he's fought already. You know what I mean? Like like. We we heard Charlo said like yeah I mean, don't don't underestimate my movement but he fought one of the best movers in all boxing I don't care what weight class and Caleb Plant and he ended up mm-hmm. cutting the ring off when it's time he you know what I mean like it's only it's a, it's a square box it's nowhere to go so I don't care if you a, a ballerina in there it's, it eventually gonna get cut off and eventually you're gonna have to fight so I think punch and power he fought Kovalev it's it's like you know what I mean like so like like yep. he he was he was, like, like, like you couldn't put a Charlo, Charlo together to beat that guy. I thought he had slim to none chance to win, but I was rooting for him to win. I wasn't rooting for him, but I, I, I wanted him to win. You know, I, I was rooting for him too, but I'm, I'm a little biased. Um, when I spent time with fighters, being a producer all these years, I, I, I root for them. Like Tony, I, I, I spent some time with you and your family, and and your dad, rest in peace. And um, I'm always rooting for you when you fight. You fought Tim Zhu. Back in March, it was mm-hmm. a tough fight in Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about that fight and Zoo as an opponent. Is is he the okay. good? Okay. Um. So so I think Tim is is good. It's good. There's no there's no hating him. I think he's good. Do I think he faced uh, Tony Harrison for me to judge how good he is? No, I I don't think I, I think. Like, like going into the fight, I, I was so confident. Like, I'm like, oh, this guy, he's really, like, basic. So my whole training, my whole uh, training camp, it was based on power. And it was, you know, like, it was it was based on me fighting guys that was that had snappy punches, that got snap on the end of them, um, guys that threw a lot of punches. But when I got in there and I was stuck in the mud, I went back to the corner round one and said, "Yo, he not even strong." Like I got hit with his first shot. I'm like, "Yo, he not even strong." But what we didn't underestimate is he's very reactive and he's kind of fast. Like he mm-hmm. his punch is coming out very fast. So if I if I had known that from the beginning, and I would have had faster guys coming in. I had faster sparring partners, maybe smaller, and I would have had smaller guys come in and guys that was that was that, that was that was able to give me more speed to the punches. I would have seen. Every single thing, yeah, but I but but I was so caught up in him knocking everybody out that I'm thinking like, oh, we fighting Triple G again. We sparring, we we going back to the we going back to the lab, but nah, we we went to the lab and he was very very underestimatedly he was fast. Punch was coming off fast. Yeah, that's that's great insight. And that's something you know we we talk about Tim Zhu on the show quite a bit in terms of what what his potential is. And um, Paulie and I are both in agreement. He's got good fundamentals for a guy coming out of Australia. Very good. Mm-hmm. So and like, and you said some, some certain times he is a little basic, but um, he gets the job done. He's workman like at times. H- how do you see him in in the fifty four pound division as he progresses? How how is he going to be able to 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 handle the other guys in the weight class? Yeah, he's got a belt now, so. Yeah. I, well, well that, I hate this shit, man. I hate I hate this sport that just give away shit. Like, you know what I mean? I know he, but I know he, I know he really worked his way to. He won the opportunity with uh, the opportunity with him, man. He worked his way up, but don't just get it. Like, come on, I'm man, with I'm with you on that one, champ. Make it, in man, boxing. Are, man, man, make us earn this shit, man. Why why are we just giving away? Like, come on, man. Like, like cool. Be Brian Mendoza if that if that happens. And then give him the belt, right? But I'm like, nah. Like, so Brian Mendoza is hearing this. Spark guys faster. Spark mm-hmm. don't spark guys stronger because the power is is in is in the speed. The power is in the shots that you don't see. So get guys that's fast. So get the time. Get that timing down pat. Bingo. Because physically, like he wasn't like physically like like massively like I like you know you can feel somebody like when you when you shake somebody's hand like bam you like this yeah. is strong mm-hmm. but he it wasn't that it wasn't the physical strength but the thing when you see him catching all those uh quarters and and nickels and dimes and this and he catching up reactively fast man he's reactively fast and I think that's the thing I underestimated it was 
the the speed part of it. I, I underestimated his speed, and I and I brought in more guys for physical strength, power, and it was so. And I and I told you, I did good. Like I did, I did my camp ended great, one of the great. But then I got into that. I'm like, bro, I cannot. I don't understand it. Like I'm I, I'm going to from spot to spot, and I'm sticking, and I'm I can't. Like, I'm stuck in the mud, but. Yeah, I thought I thought he did. I thought he did what he was supposed to do against a guy like you know what I mean. Like, I thought like I like I like him. I like him. I like I like him. I like his team. I like I like I like the the, the like they not ducking no wreck. They not ducking no smoke. And um, I I like I like the kid. And I think he's tough. Man, oh, that's, that's, that's one of the worst things to be in a fight that you prepare for one thing and then you have to deal with another. Oh I've been there, man, I've been there. I've been there a bunch of times, and that's 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 a bad place to be. Man, hold that, hold that thought, Tony. Hold, hold that you. thought. We're gonna take Got a quick you. break. Um, and look, we're trying to get to a hundred thousand subscribers on Pro Box. Look, look yeah. who I'm talking to. Look who I'm talking yeah. to. Champions, Tony yeah. Harrison and Chris yeah. Algieri. Yeah. Subscribe to Pro Box. We have a Man, lot of yeah. new faces, new members of the family. Let's take a look. And it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege to be a part of this beautiful panel, man, you guys got going on. Thank you. A lot of the fighters that I see that fight on Pro Box, either they were on top at one point, got knocked off, and they're trying to rebuild. Then I see a lot of young little prospects that are coming up. It's for the diehard fans, man. People that just love watching boxing. Uh, all the matches are always competitive, and they put on great shows. Pro Box is the real deal. Wednesday nights, Tony. Every other Wednesday, we have Wednesday night fights on Pro Box TV. The next one's October 18th. Bulletproof Brandon Glanton in a big cruiserweight fight against Carlos Romenta. That's a wide open cruiserweight division. So you got to check this out. You, hey, Tony, you have to subscribe. Pro Box TV. Get the app. Subscribe. And this is serious. Tony Harrison does not do interviews. He's on Pro Box TV doing an interview you don't see tony harrison doing interviews I tony don't. you were they talking pay me enough. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about tim zoo but i want to talk about you um you're 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 a young you're a, a relatively young man in this game um you're are you done with the sport because it looked like you were but then i heard you weren't are you still going to fight i, I would love to fight again i, I i'm not I, i'm not i'm like i said like i, I think i got a lot of youth in me I think it was just a lot of things about myself personally. Like I had to really look in the mirror and be like, I don't care who else behind me, but that, that man that I'm looking at right here, you got to do things a little bit different. And right now, like I said, for the first time in, I don't know, forever, I'm walking around, not even training for a fight. I'm walking around at 157. Mm -hmm. Ever, the first time ever I've ever, you know, so now that I'm now that I'm working out, now that I'm training, I'm really focusing on detail about the sport of boxing. You know what I mean? Like a lot of times I you know, I got the 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 skill, but you still gotta sharpen the tools up, man. Like if you don't if you don't take that razor blade and you don't, you know, like eventually it gets dull. You know what I mean? So every camp that I've I've had is usually me camping to lose the weight to get back to one fifty four and not camping to sharpen the tools. So like now that I'm around the weight, I'm just really just sharpening in the tools. And like I said, the more the more the more they wait to call me maybe for a fight, the more I just keep sharpening the tools. So I don't even I'm not even one of the guys that complain about the inactivity. The only thing that makes me go away from the sport is the inactivity. You know what I mean? It ain't wins and losses because that comes with being a competitor. So I think I think if I do step away, it's because the inactivity steps steps me out the way. And for me for me to be successful with myself, I just gotta be active. Yeah, Tony, I've been a big fan of yours for a long time. You know, I, I love guys with good boxing IQ. And I mean, you had power too. So you you could box, you were smart, and you were knocking guys out. So you're 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 my kind of guy that I like to watch. But oh also, I, I your training style, I love what you're doing with the other fighters. Um, uh, I commented on I think it was either one of your posts or Alicia's posts, and I'm like, I'm like, mm -hmm. look at Tony, man. He's got perfect technique, even when holding pads, because you, you you look like you were catching the the, the, the the punch just perfectly and look like yeah. you were throwing a punch. And yeah. uh yeah, so how has that transition been? I mean, well, there's trend, you've probably been doing it for a long time, but you know, mm -hmm. you, you, you talked about potentially moving on in the sport. Well, you you've got a, a whole next role and a whole new career already lined up. So, you know, what are your thoughts about that moving forward with training? Um, I think um, I think 
you know, you you I, you see me at the table with anybody that understands boxing. You see me at the table with, with anybody that knows boxing, and I'm talking about we're gonna have a three hour conversation. And you know, me is it, we're gonna have a three hour chess match because I understand the sport just like you do, and I don't care how old you are, right? Yep. And for me, I just needed the opportunity to find somebody that would give me the opportunity to trust me, to listen to me, to open their mind. And, and, you know, Alicia was definitely a hard egg to crack. But, you know, once I cracked it and, and she started to understand me and started to just trust me and, and, and hear me out, listen to me. And then now we just, when I say we flowing, and I'm talking about I don't see this train, I don't see nobody derailing this train as long as this shit goes on to the end, right? Because she's picking up on everything that I'm, that I'm, that I'm giving her. She's picking up on it. Like first, Alicia was just the fighter. Now she's the thinker. She's the, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, like she, she, she offers so much more than just trying to knock people out and being a brawler. You know what I mean? And she's starting to understand, okay, look, I got to set this up now. You know, you, you fighting girls now. You fighting girls now, you're going to kill your whole morale of your body, and you may cut some of your years short if you keep thinking like a brawler. But if you think like a think like a boxer and not a fighter, then the, then, then the longevity we have in this sport is amazing. Now, I'm talking about she's fast, balance is good, power is good, defense is good, lateral movement is good, and I'm talking about she's picking up on everything. And now you got her doing this. Oh, man, listen Any, to me. Anyone, who, anyone who's paying attention sees how she has turned a corner in terms of her IQ. Bingo. Bingo. And, that, and, that's, the, and that's the thing. Like, that's the longevity. So now when I, when I teach her stuff, and I tell her all the time now, like, I don't care who you go train with now. You know you know how to get out of these situations. <laughs> telling you. you know what I mean? Like, nobody got to tell you how to – because you know how now, like, right? Like, at first, she's just fighting. But now, these scenarios that I give her, man, and, and, and the situations, the situation ships that I give her in the ring, she gets out all of them with flying colors. And I'm telling the longer they wait for these mega fights for her, the worse it's going to be because she's getting better every day. Well, Tony, we um, you brought up Alicia. Um, I have to ask you, she she tested positive for two banned substances. Mm -hmm. Um can you shed any light on the situation? Um, because it kind of went dark. She's denying it, and we haven't heard anything about the process. Um, can you shed any light on that situation, and were you surprised when that happened? I, I like you guys because y'all talk about some shit that I probably would they, would they couldn't pay me to even talk about, but I'm going to talk about it with you guys on pro Um Yeah, so, yeah, the, the test – Hit me by surprise. Just was it hit. So when I when I heard when you guys heard it that she had tested positive, it was the same time I heard it. You know what I mean? Like, and let me let me let me tell y'all this about AB. If y'all don't know AB, AB is a health freak. She is avocado. She like oh, that's too much salt. You know, no, no, don't get that salt. Get the Himalayan salt. No, 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 no. don't use that. Use avocado oil. No, like AB is literally. Be help free. Like she wouldn't put anything in her body without it being nutritious to her to her soul. You know what I mean? Like that woman wouldn't take anything, anything. You know what I mean? But you know, I, I think um for maybe other fighters, maybe for other managers or promoters, they want to find a loophole in somebody that's doing something good, right? And even though it did to like it's, it's, it's nobody's help, it's nobody else's fault but hers. I'm guessing, you know what I mean? Like, can't nobody say you took some or, you know what I mean? Can't nobody put nothing in your system, right? So it must have been something that you did. So nobody can really, you can't blame nobody else for how they, how they treating you now. You can't blame people for how they reacting to you now, right? Because you give them, you gave them that by whatever you 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 know you they found something in your in your system. But I'm like. She's doing everything like she's jumping over hurdles, man, to to, to try to circle back and and paying money to to you know to lawyers, paying money to to private investigators, like doing like and she's spending thousands and thousands of dollars to try to get people that's gonna to to, to, to try to clear her name to convince people of the truth. But when once again, I tell her like, look, I know. The people around you know, like real athletes know, like when you beat Michaela and you have Vada, did you drop dirty? Nah. Anytime other than that, have you ever dropped 
tested when they, when they test you for big fights or do you just, no you don't so I'm like now you're trying to spend money to convince people of the truth and you're never going to do that because it no matter if you if you take 20 lie detector tests in front of the whole world on CNN guess what they're going to say well she's still tested dirty hmm. we don't care we don't care what the outcome was she tested dirty and I'm telling her like we we you got to like sometimes when you, when you keep trying to tell people the truth it sounds like a lie and I'm like this let them believe what they're going to believe. I know the kind of fighter you is, and everybody else around the world should know the kind of fighter you is. If you ever went to a a, a, a meeting or something, y'all had food on the table, she got a salad. She got a fish. She got, you know what I mean? Like, she's not even that kind of girl, man. But, you know, who am I? Who, I'm going to go in there and say what? That the fighter was not dirty? I guess they're going to say on Twitter, shred me. <laughs> yeah, no, that bitch tested dirty. Like, they they going to, they going to, you, you a dirty coach. You know what I mean? So why am I going out here to try to defend you, right? When I already know the truth, right? Just like you know the truth. So I think it's a situation that was sorry. I, you know what I mean? Like, and then, and then it comes to those instances where, like, where, like, I'm a guy that said, Canelo, when Canelo said he tested dirty for bad meat. I'm a guy, I'm a guy on the outside that's like, man, you mm. cap. You cap. You, you, man, you that. Hell no. But now we come to this situation, and I'm like, oh, Canelo telling the truth. Mm. You know what I mean? Canelo could Canelo could have took some bad me. Now, now, now I'm like, damn, because I know that right. Alicia is the cleanest fighter I know. Right. Cleanest. Right? So when she tested dirty, I'm like, oh, Canelo could have been telling the truth. Mm. So now, so now, so now, now in the back of my head, I'm like, damn, you cannot judge a book by its cover. And I know that, right? Because now, now the cleanest fighter got, got tested dirty. Now, guess what? It could have been bad me. Guess what? It could have been something in your dream. Guess what? It could have been something in your damn Canelo could have got tested like that. Canelo, and, and now I'm a I'm a firm believer that Canelo had bad me. I'm a firm believer that he had bad me. Tony, we're gonna take a quick break because we're we're running out of time. These shows are too short. They're too short. Remember to sign up, subscribe to ProBox TV. Subscribe. New faces, subscribe. New faces at ProBox. Take a look. What's up, y'all? Y'all know who it is. Showtime Sean Porter, two-time retired world champion. I just joined Pro Box TV All-Star Cast. Check everything out. Follow, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend to tell their mama. You know their mama gonna tell everybody else. Click the link below where you wanna be, Pro Box TV. We got about a minute left with Tony Harrison, which is not enough time, Chris. Chris, we need more time. We, no, we need more time. time we so... need more time with Tony. We got we got to get something going with that with that chess situation. I think I think hey, Tony hey, back I'm is a good that. idea. Let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> hey, well, Chris, I, I said off air that you know I was in his camp for for a few days, and this guy can play chess and bowl. And when he plays chess, it's the most trash talking I've ever heard in a chess match. Like Tony, if you had a a, a YouTube channel playing chess. I yeah. guarantee you, people would watch. The world needs okay, to see look, that. Look, 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 look! I'm not really that that internet savvy or, or that or that socially savvy. So if you create one for me, you create a page for me. I promise you, I will start doing it. Hey, well, Chris, you got here just... today, so so you 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 you're, you're, you're savvy enough, and we'll we'll figure something out. Yeah, he yeah, just launched the challenge. Out. See, you Tony, I how to make that YouTube channel for me, and I'm gonna do that. I'm, I'm gonna stream we'll, that. We'll, every we'll day. get you popping. You'll be good. I have your number, I, Tony, I'm, so I'm you know I'm gonna do it. Let please, I'm. That man's got two Emmys behind him. He's got two Emmys behind him. He, he'll hook you up. Well, guess what? He about to have three because once I get on there. <laughs> All right, guys, we we are out of time. Tony, you got to come back. You got to come back on Pro Box. It was great talking to you. Pro Box TV to. is your boxing channel. Yeah.